Welcome, everyone, to another segment of Above and Beyond's Speak Your Peace. I'm Memory, and I am your host for today. I would like to thank everybody for tuning in and watching our show. Um, I have two special guests here with me. Um, here, this is Steve, and this is Lisa. But as I get with through with some housekeeping, I want to let you know all let you all know where Above and Beyond is. It's located at 2942 West Lake Street, right off the corner of Lake and Sacramento. Um, it's also an outpatient recovery center, and it helps people of all ages, creeds, and colors. Above and Beyond is one of the um, premier recovery centers located there in the heart of uh, the West Side. If you need help, this is the place to be. So I'm gonna get started. First, I'm gonna let the young lady to my right introduce herself and let us know who she is. Hi, my name is Lisa, uh, Lisa Gray. I am um, a business owner. Mm -hmm. um, I've had some life challenges um, prior to becoming a business owner. Um, I tell you what, we're going to go over to this person yeah. and let him introduce himself, and then we're going to get with it. Hello, my name is Stephen Diggs. I am a husband, a father, a grandfather, a son, an uncle, and all those great things. I'm also a certified peer recovery specialist at Above Beyond. I chose these two individuals to be on this show today because we talk about people being boots on the ground, people who help other people in the midst of. Even when they going through, I have watched these two individuals reach back and try to help somebody else in doing what they do. Even as Lisa was building her business, it took on the form of helping other people in spite of whatever was, whatever else was going on. This is how she started. So, Lisa, just give us a little bit of your background. The entire background? Yeah. What? Okay, so, well, my business started um, in February of 2020. Uh, it was right before the pandemic. Uh, when the pandemic happened, we were shut down. However, uh, I found a need to um, still be able to service the community. There were elderly um, uh, residents of the communities who had doctor's appointments and couldn't get to the doctor, um, A, because of lack of transportation, and B, I would say probably B is A, the fear of COVID. Uh, so we offered our sanitized vehicles. We mask up, glove up, take um, the elderly to the uh, doctor's appointments, um, take them to the grocery store, whatever they needed to be done. Um, and we didn't charge them maybe $10 a ride, brown trip. Uh, we weren't looking to make any money. We were just looking to be of service uh, to our community. Um, when the pandemic ended, uh, we started with one vehicle, one minivan. Mm -hmm. um, when the pandemic ended, uh, we got one client at $65 a week. Um, we would take that child to back and forth to school. I have a business partner. His name is Stephen Price. And um, we would alternate um, taking the, the, doing the routes. I worked in the afternoon, so I would do the morning shift. He worked in the morning, so he would do the evening shift. To keep Can you tell me the name of your business? The name of our business is Price Brothers Transportation. Okay, and we're going to hold there, and I need to talk to Mr. Diggs. Mr. Diggs, can you tell me what you do? At Above and Beyond. At Above and Beyond. I am a certified peer recovery specialist, which I am a support specialist. I have people in recovery, kind of help navigate them on their journey to recover, um, for, I mean, to make their life better. Well, Steve, I have worked closely with you, and... I don't think that peer recovery specials covers what you do. You know, I, I, I'm i here to say that Steve is truly, he's there like 
5 o'clock in the morning, helping people, just opening the door, letting people know that they have somewhere to go to get them some help. And that's, that's a hard thing to do. It's not easy because sometimes people don't even know they need help. <laughs> You know, so I want to thank you for being that type of person. Um, so what do you do in your classes? How do you how do you get people into that class and how do you help them? So I, I actually do two classes. I do a class called Recovery Skills, and that is to help people with skills that they need in their everyday life. We always talk about the toolbox, tools that you need mm -hmm. to stay focused and stay stable in your life. So we just... Talk about how how we um, Your voice up. just keep people re uh, recovering in the toolbox. We just talk about things you need. Like if you had a toolbox, something's broken, you need something to fix it out. So in the toolbox and recovery, we talk about sponsors, um, um, accountability partners, uh, uh, your family members, your church, and stuff like that. So we always have people to have a go-to because sometimes if you don't have a go-to, you know what to go to in order to not be right and sometimes we all need that toolbox where we can reach back and say i put this in my toolbox so now i need to use this mm -hmm. i can get it out Absolutely. and help and and help somebody else Absolutely. okay um also i want to let people know that they can call in today and the number here is 312-738-1060 we got a young man back there named Lance family he's monitoring the phones so if you need to call in and say anything to us or ask a question, we, we would love to hear from you. So that's it. And that's Speak Your Peace. But back to you, Miss Gray. You know, um, and it could be either one of you. When you see people that, you know, our communities, what would you say needs to be done to, to get the help that the people need? in our communities. Why aren't more black businesses being helped? I would say that uh, more black businesses are not being helped because they don't offer as much help for black businesses unless you are uh, a woman-owned minority business, which means I would have to have 51% ownership of this business um and then another reason why is point just bluntly um people in our own communities don't patronize us um when they do they um i try i try to keep my prices really low really affordable so that uh the regular person any the regular everyday person can afford transportation to and from for their children. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not trying to get rich. Uh, I'm just trying to be of service. And then there's just um, the the help is it, hard to find. It's just hard to find uh, grants, especially if you're not a non for profit, and I'm not a non for profit. So it's harder for me to find transportation grants um, to purchase new vehicles or or for to uh, hire more employees and stuff like that. Um, we just need to have uh, more a more helping hand. Okay. Um, um, can I chime in? Yes, sir. So I, I just think I can. I think for our community and what I see in my community, I mean, East Godfrey, I think that there's not enough stability. In, in our neighborhoods, like he was saying, uh, if you have a black owned business, uh, our people that don't have stability, that don't have jobs and uh, can't find jobs because of the, the uh, social environment that they live in, uh, that does not allow them to want to go to her store because she needs to make money and she needs her taxes to be exactly right. The other uh, people that come in from different countries or different uh, uh, ethnic groups, they can come in and they can get a grant just like that. And they go in, you can owe them a quarter, you can owe them a dollar. They might even let you write the books, you know, like back in the day. Mm -hmm. So I think that in my community, it, it's a lack of stability. Well, I think that it also, in, in recovery, people seeking recovery, it's hard for our community to even say like, um, we need emotional help. Uh, we need uh, mental help. We need, 
um, alcohol. It's, it's like um, our neighborhoods is like a dumping ground for everybody else to take our dollar. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, our dollars go out, but nothing, they, comes, nothing in. comes in. And, and it's blatant and you can see it. You know, and I think it touches every area that we um, participate in. I would like to be able to get some type of uh, assistance to open a before and after care center on the corners, right? For students, for parents to help parents to have a place to take their children per, uh, before school and with and couple and partner with my transportation business to pick up the kids from school. So that the parent um, has child care while they're at work and they, if they need to work overtime, they can work overtime. If they need um, the students, because typically, our, unfortunately, our house, our families are typically single parent families. Uh -huh. yes. and, and mom, and there's a lot of single parent dads now too. Um, they're tired once they get off work. Mm -hmm. So they they're overwhelmed. They still gotta cook dinner. They still gotta wash clothes. That's why I would step in. Well, see, why um, I think it's important, and especially the transportation piece, like getting back and forth to treatment and stuff like that. You know, that's how I think. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, Steve, what do you think is a barrier to people receiving and getting treatment? Because I think once. Uh, people get into treatment, their life starts to open up and change. And they can be that parent, and they can get those jobs, and they excel. But when you got all these blocks and these barriers in front of you, it's hard. So so for me, being a, being a recovering addict, I was addicted to crack cocaine. Uh, I always wanted to get clean, but I didn't know how to get clean. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was enough resources. Some places that you went to, your insurance didn't cover it. Your insurance only covered three days. Right. You know, especially if you was on public assistance. Mm -hmm. You know, and what I see every day is what I see is people want to get clean, but they don't know how because we don't have the resources in our neighborhoods. You know, we don't have that kind of fund. Like she was saying, you know, if she can get a grant to have a place where you can drop your children off, go to work, or you can put them in somewhere where they can be safe because it's just not safe in neighborhoods. So That's something right. like that is like we can't get those grants as quickly and as fast as other people can. And I don't think that I just think it's a social thing where they don't want it in those neighborhoods because if we begin to realize who we are, it's going to hurt the people. That's it. You know, um, I believe that um, the powers that be know who we are. Uh -huh. We just don't know who we are. Uh -huh. You know, um, and if we stop with the crab in the bucket mentality, crab uh -huh. in the barrel mentality, uh -huh. pulling each other down to get up, and we realized that we got in a circle and held each other's hands and lifted each one, each one of us up, just how powerful our communities will be. I too am recovering, uh -huh. you know, and um, it's, it gives me great pleasure to be able to be of service to my community and other communities with the transportation business and the desire to want to expand and be able to help them, uh, my community even more, especially single parents. I once was a single parent, you know, and it's hard. Yes. It's hard not having reliable transportation, reliable childcare, you know, um, and sometimes that pushes the parent over the edge. I can't. It can push the parent over the edge. So um, with support, uh, mm -hmm. It gives the parent a little breathing room to know to have the the, the mental um, stability to know that their children are just okay. 
And I, I just want to pick back because I also think that even when the parent is going to recover addiction, that the children still need to heal too. That's right. And if we just not, and if we do not have those resources, the children can't heal. They can't heal off an hour of six months clean, hour five years clean. They need to heal from the stuff that happened when we weren't there for them, when we was doing the stuff that we did. And because they don't heal, they act out. They do stuff that they know they shouldn't do because. They can always say, well, you didn't do this or you didn't do that. But we don't have no resources anymore. But know? don't your early intervention class address some of those issues? Mm -hmm. But where does these um, participants, um, how do you get these participants involved in that class? So that early, class, real. So, so my early intervention is for people that does not have an addiction, but they have, they have a lifestyle. Okay. So if they... Sold drugs, been on drugs. I have people in my class that have, have been locked up for 26 years for murders and stuff. And when they go in, they're 17 years old. And when they come out, they're 17 years old. Mm -hmm. Right. You know exactly. Saying? So how <laughs> exactly. how do we help them change their life? What are the things that we talk to them about? When we talk to them about uh, being a better father or a husband, you know, how can we get them to reconnect with their family? And how can we get them to want to take a trade? Some people been locked up so long, they don't... They don't even know what a trade is. You know, all they right. knew was when they went in, mm -hmm. they were selling drugs. And when they get out, people still selling drugs. And if I can't find a job because I've been locked up 26 years. What do you think I'm going to do? Sell, Sell drugs. drugs. So we're trying to change that narrative and let them know mm -hmm. that there are other options. We try to find the resources that we're talking about today to help uh, help them. And my issue is reentry. I love reentry, mm -hmm. but some reentry programs. Some people can't even qualify for them. They have served their time, did what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, well, you was a murderer, you can't do this, or you was a, a sex offender, you can't do this, or you was an arsonist, it's, it's, it's always bearers, or you got a felony, you can't get an apartment, or mm -hmm. we don't have felony. Yes. I would like to repeat the number here. It's 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. 1060 can tv we are looking for a caller if you have any questions if you want to talk about anything or have us answer any questions i got a dynamic um group here and we're here to help so come on the call us i'd like to add that i uh hire uh men and if i find women but i have a couple of guys that work for me well I'm teammates i don't call my uh the, the people that work with me, my employees, I call them my teammates because I can't do it without them. But my teammates are living in recovery homes, you know. And at first, um, there was a little pushback, um, but I fought for them, you know, because everybody deserves a chance. You know, the, the, the power up above gave me a chance. So who am I to deny another person? So, you know... Maybe we can get together and see, you know, uh, what's the store for next year? And you got some decent candidates, you know. I'd be willing to to work. This. That's 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 is what it's all about. And, and and we do. I mean, we have people uh, that need jobs and that want jobs to have rebuild their lives. And just like I'm stuck, like you say, the crab in the bucket. Every time I get up, it's something trying to put me back down. Okay, I got a job. I'm making money. I want to provide a house or a home for my children and myself. Oh, if you do the background check, oh, you got a felony. We're not going to rent to you. I think that society is stuck on your past and not your future. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and sometimes they don't allow us to even prove ourselves, to say, hey, I want to be a productive member of society. I was young. I made some mistakes. I was on drugs. And I made a lot of mistakes, but now I'm trying to redefine who I am. I'm trying to rediscover who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to renew my mind, but I'm not getting a chance because every time I'm trying to tell you this is who I am, this is where I want to be, you put me down and say, oh, that, but that's what you was. Mm -hmm. Well, those 30 minutes, they do fly by. Um, I want to thank everybody that um, watched the show, and I especially want to thank thank my guests for coming out in the storm to be here oh okay okay um but i want to also talk about um i want to say farewell to a, a dynamic lady miss michelle williams i need to say that because she was instrumental 
in my growth and my development and she's got her wings and I want to say that to her family that she will always be a part of my heart and um every week it looked like I announced somebody who has passed away but I for the for the end of this show, we got five more minutes. And I just want to say, is there anything that you would like to say in a, got about a minute or two? Can you come back to me? Okay, I'll come back to Steve. I have a lot to say. I just want you guys to know that whoever you're voting for, make sure you uh, read their bios, make sure you know what they stand for and what they don't stand for. Sometimes we go out and we vote for people, and then the laws that we want them to change, they push back against them. The stuff that we need them to do, they push back against them. Sometimes we need to figure out who we're voting for and why we're voting for them and what is on their platform. I think um, that's, that's really true. You know, um, and I think that we need to really push on our people to say, you had me vote for you. Now do the things that you said that you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Do the right thing. Yes. You know, we, we depend on you. Then when they get in these uh, positions, they, it's like they throw us up under the bus. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they don't even think about us anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, they lifestyle change, but ours don't. Mm -hmm. You know, so... I'd like to say um, thank you, first of all. Thank you. And uh, if anyone needs uh, any type of transportation needs met, affordable transportation, slide and scale transportation, um, you can look us up. At, we're at Price Brothers Transportation uh, dot com. Uh, or 877-926-3936 and we can always work with you um, because my like I said my goal and my uh, the end game is to make it affordable and um, easy for parents to well I would like to say the girl can drive I go anywhere with her <laughs> okay. Okay. I want to say one more thing and if okay. you want to get that job you want to get your life together before you get that job you can also come to Above Me Young Recovery Center where we offer uh, outpatient treatment center we have a lot of uh, different things that we do over there and it's free if you don't have insurance it's located at 2942 West Lake Street and we have Lisa pick you up and take That's you right. over there sure will. no problem uh, so this is our show today. I enjoyed myself. I wish we had more time. And next time, I hope a caller will be brave enough to call in. And this was Speak Your Peace. Have a great day, everyone.